Good morning, everybody. Or at least it's morning here in Redmond, where I am uh, currently in the good state of Washington. And um, I'm still in my garage. This is the uh, the home office setup that uh, that I still have here, and I'm getting used to a standing desk, which I've never had before. And uh, I got one of those mats to stand on, those anti-fatigue mats, it's called. Um, and it's really, really helpful. It makes me able to stand here for much longer than I was in the beginning. I don't know if that actually helps or if it's me, I'm getting more used to it and, and, and or whatnot, but um, it's getting more comfortable. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. Um, everyone on the live stream and uh, everyone watching uh, on demand on YouTube. This is the third episode and as usual, we take a uh, live Q&A here. So if you are a live attendee, you have a question and answer section. Please feel free to ask any questions uh, about today's subject or any other subject related to uh, Visual Studio. And today's topic is Visual Studio subscriptions and how they can help us uh, in general, but also like now that we're working from home, hashtag quarantine life. And uh, we'll see what uh, what's in there because um, I don't know myself a lot about subscriptions. Um, and I know that a lot of other people don't know about these subscriptions. And I've heard that people are not even aware whether or not they are subscribers or not. So to help us demystify this, what are subscriptions? What are some of the benefits we can get? Um, we have a guest in the studio and uh, it is uh, Katie. So Katie, welcome to the show. Hey Mads, thanks for having me. I uh, love the studio, the, the home studio. <laughs> Yeah, it looks great. Can you tell uh, the audience a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do at Microsoft? Yeah, um, so my name is Katie Bushlin. I am a program manager here on the Visual Studio subscriptions team. I've been here for about two years now uh, and it's been a really interesting wild ride. Um, so as some of you may know, this was formerly MSDN subscriptions. Uh, it was rebranded, I wanna say four or five years ago now. A lot of people still refer to it as MSDN, um, but it is now Visual Studio subscriptions. And it's been quite an interesting journey learning the 25 plus years of history, uh, learning about how things used to be, you know, shipped out um, physically and you would get a physical disc with your MSDN on it. And now it's all online and digital. I've spent the first bit of the time on the team here just learning about all of that history. And now I'm taking my learnings and trying to update the user experience within the portals and within how you actually use and leverage your subscription so we can make it better. That's awesome. So um, MSDN subscriptions, I am fully aware what that is, or at least I think I am because I know that I was an MSDN subscriber in the past. I have been a Microsoft MVP as well, which gives you for free an MSDN subscription. And that was the place that I could go online. I could never remember the uh, the address or where to go exactly. So I had to like, I Googled it like MSDN subscriber downloads, I think I searched for to go download an, a version of Office or Windows or Visual Studio uh, or other software. I think it came with basically all the software Microsoft had. And I loved it. That was like where I would get all my software and I never had to worry about licenses and all that sort of stuff. It was it was legal. It was all great uh, and available, right? It was it was it was fantastic. And so um, that is my knowledge of MSDN subscriptions back in the day. But I have a feeling there's much more to it than that. Is that right? This is not just about downloading software anymore. Yeah, definitely. As downloads are a very big part of it, as you mentioned, we do, depending on your subscription level, have almost anything Microsoft has ever offered. Uh, we still have MS DOS. If for some reason you want to get a copy of that, it's still there, it's still in our catalog. Um, and actually, one of the things I'm looking at right now is how do we make that downloads experience better? So if anyone in the chat here or anyone that's listening to this afterwards has any feedback for us and what that you like and what you don't like, you're going to see surveys starting to pop up in that downloads experience soon. Um, and if you can please, you know, take the time to give me your feedback so we can make that better. That would be really appreciated. Um, but as you said, aside from downloads, there's all sorts of benefits that you get with your subscription. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here and I can show you now where you actually go to see what you have. So let me know if you can see this here. Okay, hang on. I'm uh, <laughs> moving it live here. Perfect. There we go. 
Perfect. So you're going to want to come up here to my.visualstudio.com. Um, the benefits page here is the main page that you're probably going to be most excited about here if you don't realize that you have all of these fun things. Uh, a big one that was really helpful for right now when you're at home is Pluralsight and some of our training benefits. So depending on what subscription you have, you can get up to six months of free Pluralsight training. We also here have a toggle where you can see what else. So there's LinkedIn Learning, there's Data Camp, um, you have a one year subscription to Code Magazine. So a lot of really great resources here that you can leverage when you're trying to learn a new skill uh, or freshen up on something that you've maybe done in the past. Very cool. So I really like the, that we have like plural sites up there. I think that might be one that some people know about and mm -hmm. you know working from home right now and um, uh, you know it's it's a different type of work pattern that we have. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't have like this sort of linear routine that I used to have where I you know I put some work in, in the morning then I had lunch then I put another chunk of work in and then I went home. It is no longer like that. I you know, I have to go outside. I have to sit somewhere else to change things up a bit. And I think something like watching and learning like from a plural side or something would be extremely helpful here uh, these days, right? So I don't know, do yeah. people actually take advantage of these uh, plural side courses? Yeah, for sure. One of the cool things about plural side is you don't have to just do it on your laptop. They have all sorts of apps so you can connect to, I believe, Apple TV or your Roku. Uh, and actually, you know, sit down on your TV and watch on your couch. You don't have to just be sitting in front of your laptop or your computer all day. I know for myself, I'm sitting here all day. I want to get up from my desk. I want to be able to walk around. Uh, maybe while I'm cooking dinner, I can have something going on. I'm streaming to my TV so that um, I'm not just sitting in front of a screen all day or for yourself. You know, you have your new standing mat, which looks really, really comfortable. Um, but you may not want to stand in your garage all day. You may want to be playing with your kiddos and have something on in the background as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Should I share your uh, screen again? Let's see what yeah. else is there. Yeah, so some of the other things here, you get an Azure monthly credit. So depending on your subscription level, you can get upwards of $150 a month. And that refreshes every month with uh, no actual charge to yourself or your company. So you can go in, you get your own little uh, individual sandbox that you can play around with, um, freshen up your skills, maybe build some cool stuff in there. And once your $150 is up, it just stops. So you don't have to worry about your company being billed or yourself being billed. Um, if you do want to spend more than that, you can, of course, you know, attach your credit card to it and spend more. But there's, you know, by no means any pressure to do that. Right. Yeah, that's how I use Azure. I host a bunch of websites up there and it's all uh, sort of free. It's all comes with my subscription. That's awesome. Yeah, 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 really cool. So let me go back to the all category and I can just kind of scroll through here. And yeah, you can see all the goodies that come with your subscription. Um, we also have some technical support incidents here that, you know, if you're really stuck somewhere and you need some help, um, typically, the paid support for Visual Studio is just that it's paid, but this gives you four incidents that you can actually open up and get that help that you need without having to have to pay for anything yourself. So hang on. So that's that's actually really important because mm -hmm. this is uh, this is different from reporting an issue. So in Visual Studio, you can go up and you can say help, send feedback, report issue, or suggest a feature. But that's not what this is. This is a much deeper, like one to one type of help that you get with someone on the other end of the phone and they help you diagnose and, and troubleshoot and all this sort of stuff. Is that is that what it is? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Ah. Exactly. So it literally works by, you know, you call in. Is that how it is? Um, actually, you chat. Um, so you chat to activate it and then you get a number that you can use moving forward. So you don't need to chat every time. Um, but you get that number, almost like a promo code, to be able to apply the the free benefit to it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so there's a huge ar array of different types of benefits here. It looks like, and uh, it's not just Microsoft things. But you mentioned Pluralsight. Yep, exactly. So a GitHub logo I saw there too. There's a bunch of other things. Well, I guess you can say that's Microsoft, but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, if so. If I had an MSDN subscription, mm -hmm. am I now automatically a Visual Studio subscriber or yeah. how or is there any transition that I have to do to get there? Yeah. Nothing you have to do on your side. 
Uh, if you had that MSDN subscription, you know, you just come here, log into my.visualstudio.com using the email address that your subscription was associated to. And you should see if you just have one, you'll just see the one in the drop down here. There is a chance that you might also have Dev Essentials. Uh, so this is a really cool program that you can sign up for. There's no cost to it, and it gives you a bunch of other little benefits here. Um, very similar, you know, you can get the Azure free account with a $200 credit. There is a plural site here as well, um, Code Magazine and Data Camp. And this is all free as well. So you may see this one in the drop down, but you can kind of click here and toggle between your subscriptions to see. Um, I have a test account here, so I have a couple more subscriptions than most people would have. But generally, you'd see your MSDN subscription here, um, probably renamed to Visual Studio Enterprise or Professional um, or whichever level it is that that one was merged into. OK, so we have a question here from uh, someone anonymous on the uh, live chat saying one benefit I see is the MS365. Is that a new benefit? I can definitely use that. Yeah, that one uh, we've had for a little bit now and it recently merged with E5 just to make things better for you. Um, so that one definitely log in and check it out. You can click here to activate or there's a little info button where you can learn more. So. What type of stuff do you get from that subscription? So that one is a developer okay. account. Um, it's not meant for production use, um, but it's meant you can you know, start developing with Microsoft Graph, um, SharePoint, Teams, uh, and I believe it, yeah, it's for yourself plus 24 users here. So it's really great if you're working on something with your team. Wow, that's fantastic, okay. Yeah, yeah that's a great benefit right there. Yeah, and, and if you check out um, docs.microsoft.com, we have documentation that covers um, a little bit deeper on most of these. Um, I'm not a Microsoft 365 expert, um, otherwise I would dive deeper into that one for you, um, but it is covered in our documentation. And um, Mads, I don't know if we can share out more information afterwards, um, but yep. yeah, perfect. Absolutely. We can do that then. Um, yeah. That's something that other people have asked for, like put links in the YouTube uh, things uh, in the description on YouTube. So I will make sure that um, Perfect. all the links we talk about here today are uh, linked from, from the description. Fantastic. Uh, Katie, you mentioned the um, Dev Essentials. Mm -hmm. And I've, that's something I've seen. I've seen it for like several years. It shows up on the websites on different areas of, of, of you know, this Visual Studio uh, information online. And I've never really understood what it was. I always thought it was like it's a separate subscription or it was something that is like a cheap way to get the dev tools you need plus a little bit extra or something like that. But um, like if you take that and compare it to the Visual Studio subscription, mm -hmm. which is the old MSN subscription, the, mm -hmm. how does how does that fit in and what's the difference and and who should get the Visual Studio subscription versus the dev essentials? And and also, is Dev Essentials a subscription? It's not a true subscription in the sense of our Visual Studio subscriptions. It's more of an introductory um, taste to what you need to get started. So it comes with um, Visual Studio Community, Visual Studio Code, and you can get started if you need an IDE and you don't need the full Visual Studio IDE. Um, community and VS Code are great uh, lightweight editors that you can use as well. Uh, and then just as a small introduction to Pluralsight. So you get the one month of Pluralsight, you get an Azure um, one time $200 credit. So kind of get your toes wet, if that makes sense. Okay, is it so, is it for startups or is it, who's it for? It's for individuals. Okay. Yeah, yeah. if you wanna learn some new skills on your own. Yeah. And then we can link out uh, some information about Dev Essentials as well. Um, they have a whole web page that you can read all about it. So if you today are using community, mm -hmm. so that means if you use community, it is very likely that you don't have a Visual Studio subscription because it's a free service. Is that correct? Most likely, yeah. Okay, so in that case, Dev Essentials is a no-brainer. There's no reason you wouldn't sign up to the free Dev Essentials and get a bunch of stuff literally for free. It's like it's like Microsoft is handing you money. Is that yeah. sort of how, how it works? <laughs> I'm sure they would love us to describe it that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and if you do have a paid subscription and you'd like to sign up for Dev Essentials, if you go to the subscriptions tab here, um, 
Let You'll me uh, see. get your screen here. Oh, okay, perfect. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't realize I wasn't sharing still. Um, so let me just leave this program real quick. So you'll see this button up here, join Visual Studio Dev Essentials. So when you click that, it gives you a little taste of what things are here. Um, you can read the terms and conditions, of course, and then confirm that you're joining. And then when you go back to the benefits page, you'll see it appear in your drop down, just like I had there. Um, if you've never had it, when you come in, you'll see a slightly different landing page here that will say, you know, we don't have any subscriptions for you. Would you like to join Dev Essentials? And you can join directly from that page if you're a brand new user. Um, so it's a really cool program. I definitely suggest checking that one out if you don't have a paid subscription. Um, also, if you have Visual Studio standalone and you don't have the subscription, you just have access to the IDE, maybe there's some other benefits in here you'd like to check out. Yeah. Um, another thing I'd recommend here if you, you know, your company has Visual Studio subscriptions, but you don't have one and you're wondering like, how the heck do I ask for one? If you know someone who has a subscription, you can actually have them use this contact my admin button. And when they click that, it opens up a bit of a web form where they can actually message the admin and maybe say, hey, like, hey, you know, Madge really wants a subscription. How do we go about getting him one? If you don't know your internal policy for requesting one, that could be really helpful. That's, that actually brings in a very interesting uh, interesting aspect because you can have, a company can have a company-wide or team-wide subscription that covers all the employees. Mm -hmm. And then you can have an individual, I as an individual, maybe I'm a my, run my own business, I'm a contractor, and I can have a subscription just for me as well. Is that accurate? Yep, yep, exactly. So if you want to purchase one, uh, you can purchase a retail level through the Microsoft Store. We also have uh, what we call monthly subscriptions that you can buy through its marketplace.visualstudio.com and you're basically paying monthly for professional or enterprise and you get access to the IDE through that. And then your company can purchase it as well. Um, Microsoft also has a number of free programs like you mentioned the MVP program. Um, we have Microsoft for startups that will come with a Visual Studio subscription as well. So there are all sorts of different ways to be able to get your hands on a subscription. You're looking for one. All right. And uh, can you talk a little bit about like the different prices and like if you if you want to use Visual Studio Pro, then which what are your options to get a subscription and what are the different price points and so on? So to so basically help us figure out like depending on who you are, how do you find out what the right subscription is to you, let's say that the right one always is the one that is cheapest that gives you the most benefit. Let's say that's the criteria we're using here. Yeah, definitely. Um, pricing does get a little bit sticky when you're talking about your company as you know, your company may have different agreements with Microsoft. But if we're just talking about an individual, let me share my screen again here. If you come to visualstudio.microsoft.com uh, slash subscriptions, here's a great web page that kind of lets you know everything about your subscription. Um, what comes with it. You can go to a compare subscriptions benefit page here that lets you actually toggle between the different subscriptions available and see what exactly comes with it. So if you're looking for, you know, I really want the one that comes with this particular benefit, you can check to see does it come with that level? What am I getting here? And be able to really use that to sell to your management team um, or whoever it is that's approving your purchase to say, I really want this thing. Here's why. And then if we so, click, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was I was just asking, where can I see the price? <laughs> yeah, so if we go buy a subscription, you get your pricing options here and you can toggle between professional and enterprise and see the price and then what comes with it at that level. So is this $45 per month for the professional subscription? It's for the professional monthly subscription. Uh, this one comes with the IDE and access to Azure DevOps. It doesn't come with Azure benefits and Pluralsight and all of those other goodies. Um, so it's a very lightweight, basically IDE access and Azure DevOps access only. Okay, so um, so if I may drill into that for a little bit. So yeah. that means when we say IDE access, we mean specifically Visual Studio yes. Professional. Yes. Not professional. enterprise, not community, but professional. 
yeah, for that level. If we toggle over to Enterprise, um, it's $250 for Visual Studio Enterprise monthly, which is very similar. You get the, the Enterprise IDE and Azure DevOps with this one. Okay. And, uh, let's get that chat window to go away. Oh, don't load. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Live so, demos. <laughs> okay, so, so there is a 5X difference between the Pro and the Enterprise, and also the amount of benefits you then get is substantially different. Yes, substantially. Plus, more. you get the enterprise version of Visual Studio, which has more features than the Pro version. Yes, exactly. And there's even a little compare IDEs right down here. So you can see, you know, do I need the enterprise version? Do I need the professional version? And see exactly what comes with each version of it here. So you can even see from community that you can get with, you know, Visual Studio Dev Essentials. And then the professional and the enterprise version. So am I looking for testing tools and debugging or what's really important to me? So you can, you know, expand these and look for the exact feature that you're looking for within the IDE itself. Oh, that's really helpful. Um, yeah. We should get that. We should get that link in, in the description too. Um, is there a, a quick link like AKA MS that you know of on top of your head for this one? I'm not sure, but we could make one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because this is fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay. And so, it does say Visual Studio Community as in the first column there, but yep. really what we're saying here is it's Dev Essentials. Is that right? Um, Dev Essentials is a program that comes with Community. Um, so you can sign up for, you can use Community on its own, but you can also sign up for Dev Essentials that gives you access to those other goodies we showed, like the $200 Azure credit, the Pluralsight, Code Magazine, and right. other benefits. So you have to sign up for that one separately. Okay, so maybe. So that chart that you just showed, it, it had community, pro, and enterprise. Yep. And in community, um, it had a had a bunch of things. But is it is it community the IDE or is it the community plus dev benefits that's in that column? Oh, that's just community the IDE. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a it's not a do we have a do we have a side by side comparison between uh, dev essentials and the Pro and the enterprise subscriptions as well. We don't, uh, but maybe that's something we should make. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's that's a, a very good point. Uh, maybe we I, I can talk with the Dev Essentials program manager and see if that's something that he'd be interested in exploring. Okay, so it sounds to me like if you are, if you are, uh, if 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 what community is enough for you. Mm -hmm. as a contractor or you're working from home, right? You don't, you know, it might be a different situation um, then community is fine, um, but you may consider doing the $45 a month and upgrade that to a pro subscription and that mm -hmm. will get you like take care of your Azure uh, DevOps as well. So you can have a good uh, like, yeah, what do you get with Azure DevOps? You get a bunch of stuff. You get like a build system, like pipelines. Yep, you get pipelines, yeah, boards. You get, yeah, your boards, your issues, your you know feature system, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and all sorts of it. All included, like yeah. all included, all hosted in the cloud for free, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then if you do upgrade to the the full yearly subscription, then you get access to all of those downloads that we mentioned as well. Um, and so the downloads do differ between which subscription level that you've gone with. So yeah. if you're looking for the Office Suite, I believe that one comes with Enterprise, not Professional. And on that compare page, you can dive deeper into seeing the downloads as well. Um, we do actually have a full Excel that you can download and you can look for, I want this one version of SQL Server. Does it come with it? And toggle between the versions to see which one actually comes with that. So it's really handy if you're looking for an old piece of software for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is one of the things I love the most about the MSM subscription back then was that I had a one-stop shop to get everything I needed to get up and going on a new laptop, a new workstation, even a server that I had to set up to host my websites or whatever. Um, yeah. So that's <clears throat> that's absolutely wonderful. Is there <clears throat> is there any issues potentially, maybe from a license perspective or I don't know, um, but if your company doesn't provide you with an MSDN, or sorry, a Visual Studio subscription, mm -hmm. and you, but you're like, hey, I want one because maybe you do some work at home as well. Does, is there any issues there but like from a license perspective if if someone goes out and buys a $45 pro subscription even though the company doesn't uh, 
doesn't do anything there for them? Um, not that I can think of. I mean, even if your company has a paid one, you should be able to buy it yourself. I can't see why your company would prevent you from making a purchase like that. Um, but they may not want you to use that for developing IP. Um, if you're working on a work project, they may not want you to be using your own subscription for that. Um, so definitely make sure that you know what their policy is for that. Um, the other thing is if you do buy, you know, the full subscription that comes with Azure Access, um, be very careful about what you're putting in Azure and using that credit on. Um, you want to make sure you're not storing your company IP somewhere that they don't want it to be. Yeah, that's a good point. And I guess if your company already has a, a subscription, let's say they have an enterprise subscription, then there's absolutely no reason you would go out and let's say personally buy a pro subscription, right? Because you already have all those benefits from the company and you're free to use those benefits however you want to do them, right? They're tied to your Microsoft identity, the, the same account you log into Visual Studio with, or, or how am I supposed to reason about this? Yeah, so all of the benefits are tied to the account that you've logged in with. You can add an alternate account that you can use for um, logging into the IDE as well as using your Azure credit for, but it is all tied back to that subscription your company gave you. So if your admin removes your subscription, you will then lose access to you know, your Azure credits and the IDE as well. Um, and I, I would just caution, you know, make sure that you understand what your company's internal policy is around your subscription because they may have set some of their own policies and I want to make sure that we're not giving you any guidance that will um, upset your company as well. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, the, but uh, if you know you're using the IDE and you're stuck at home right now, um, the IDE is tied to your license. So as long as it's you that's logging in and using it, you can use that on your home computer if you need to do development there. Um, but in our licensing terms, you know, you can't be sharing that with others in your household if they don't have their own subscription. So it is a, you know, a one to one user based licensing. OK, and so in order for people to. Take advantage of all this stuff to see whether or not they already have a subscription if they are in doubt if they do uh, or to manage their subscription, get to their subscriber downloads, do everything. It's all on my.visualstudio.com. Is yep. that right? Exactly. OK. Um, so I have sort of a, a question about like, is there a reason not to have a subscription? And what would that be if there was one? Like, are there any edge cases or caveats that say, OK, for this type of person or developer or organization or something like that, it, it doesn't make any sense to be a subscriber? For, for what reason? I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, I'm putting you on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of a, a good reason. Um, I think it really depends, you know, what kind of developer you are and what it is you're looking to do. If, you know, community or VS code suits your needs just fine and you don't need a full fledged uh, VS IDE for it, um, you may be able to get away with Dev Essentials just fine. Uh, it really depends what it is that you're looking to do and what you're looking to develop and what your particular needs are. OK, so. <clears throat> Here's what it sounds like to me. I think you've, this has been tremendously helpful because I feel like I now understand a little bit about what does it mean to be a Visual Studio subscriber? Mm -hmm. well, what do I get? But it also gives me that sort of ladder. Like if you are an individual that uh, are not looking to spend any money, uh, you can get benefits by joining the Dev Essentials program. So do that now, right? There's no reason not to go do that. Yeah, yeah uh, definitely take advantage only, of that program. The only reason is if you already have a Visual Studio subscription, which is sort of, I guess you can consider the Visual Studio subscriptions as like uh, the bigger versions of the Dev Essentials. Dev Essentials doesn't give you anything that the smallest Visual Studio subscription doesn't have. Right. So you can start small, you can start free, um, you know, with VS Community or VS Code plus Dev Essentials. Then you can move up to a the pro subscription, which is forty five dollars a month if you do monthly, or you can do a yearly and get a little bit extra. Um, and then you can go all the way up to to enterprise. And once you go to pro, you also get Visual Studio Pro. And so I guess that means that if you are not if you're using Visual Studio Code, 
is there then no reason to do a Visual Studio Pro subscription if you're not intending to use the Visual Studio Pro IDE? Um, again, it really depends what it is you know, you're looking to do. Uh, if you don't intend to use the IDE, maybe it makes sense just to stick with Dev Essentials and code. Um, but don't forget, you also get all of those other learning benefits and the Azure credit as well, um, depending if you've gone for the annual one. So getting that Azure credit and getting all of those training benefits um, might make sense of extra things that you can leverage to really uh, improve your skills. Yeah, I didn't even yeah. think about that because you get $150 of Azure credit. So if you're even if you're on Visual Studio Code only, or you are fine with Visual Studio Community, you don't you know you don't need to get mm -hmm. the Pro SKU of Visual Studio. Then if but if you want to use Azure for instance or Plural mm -hmm. then those $45 a month, let's say. Are or the the yearly subscription, sorry, the yearly, yeah, is uh, it's actually a really good deal. So yeah. if you that might be a, a cheaper way actually than to go straight to those sources and sign up for them individually. Just go through Visual Studio, even though you don't even use the Visual Studio Pro Edition. Yeah, and one thing I will note, just so we're not um, accidentally misleading people, it's up to one hundred and fifty dollars. So that's what comes with Enterprise Professional, I believe, is a fifty dollar Azure credit. Um, and that's all in the comparison chart. You'll be able to see exactly what the credit is that comes with it. OK, that's fantastic. Yeah. <clears throat> um, one other cool thing I just want to share really quickly, if you don't mind. Yep. I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, I've been taking the time to learn what comes with your subscription and what the history was here so we can make it better. So we've done a UX refresh on this front page. We still have a bunch of changes to make. But we've added this feedback button here, and when you click on it, you can actually give us feedback about a very specific targeted page, part of the page, or generic feedback. And we actually are reading through this weekly. Um, so if you do have any feedback that you want to share, definitely provide that to us so that we are making this better and making it uh, what works best for you. So I just wanted to make sure people knew that's not going to a black hole. OK. Yeah, good. That's very important to know. We do listen to the feedback. Yeah. <laughs> so please, please, if you have any, please share it. Uh, we have a question here from Jonas. Yeah. It's a little bit about Azure, so let's see here. Uh, can I transfer a subscription or sell a subscription as a deal with the project I develop for a client? So not Visual Studio, but Azure related. If it's so, you said not Visual Studio. If it is part of your subscription, it is all tied to your subscription, so you wouldn't be able to sell that. I'm not sure on the Azure side of things what the terms and conditions are of your Azure subscription. Um, it's something we may be able to look into and provide an answer to offline. I don't know if we have a way of doing that for a um, very specific question like this, Mads, um, but we'd have to check with the Azure team and see what their terms are. Right, but <clears throat> I think the um, I think a little bit of what Jonas is getting to here is let, let's say that you you're developing some uh, a website for a client. Like you're mm -hmm. an independent contractor, yeah. and you know they're going to pay for the Azure subscription, right? Because they're the client that's going to be hosted at the you know the client's Azure account, let's say. Mm -hmm. Well, what if that independent contractor could could get them to like could sell them as part of their the deal could sell them a Visual Studio subscription? Like, can you can you take an existing Visual Studio subscription? and transfer it to another Microsoft identity, like another account, in this so, case the client, or could you or could you like sell it on, be, you know, on behalf of, of uh, or to someone else? Like could you sell it, be, um, instead of Microsoft selling directly to the client, could the contractor do that instead? Yeah, as of right now, it's all tied to your own identity. And so, you know, if your admin removes it from you and gives it to someone else, if you've left the company, for example, if we go with that scenario, when you transfer that subscription to someone new, it resets. Um, so they don't see what you've done in Azure for security reasons, for example, so it all clears out. I don't know um, if this is something, maybe it's something we could look into in the future. And I'd have to read through our, uh, you know, million pages of licensing terms and uh, see if we have anything explicitly against this or a reason to not support this. Um, but it sounds like from the questions more, you want to make sure what is in Azure is retained and you're able to sell all of that with it um, with nothing clearing out. So it's something I'd have to look into. Uh, I don't feel, you know, confident in giving an answer right now because there's so many complexities to that. 
yeah, it sounds like also it has to do with sales and other things that uh, may not be what you know we're dealing with uh, as program managers. Yeah, <laughs> a little <laughs> bit above my pay grade. <laughs> yes, yes, right. OK, so um, we don't have any more incoming questions unless the uh, the live attendees here are are willing to ask some questions, which I mean, that's a, that's good because uh, that tells me that uh, you have really gotten around the subject and demystified all this for a lot of people. Are there any sort of last, um, I don't know, tips and tricks or something like r related to, you know, working from home, which is our new situation, right? Um, where subscriptions really come in. I mentioned earlier, like I thought that the plurals, plural site learning was like a great like resource for when working from home. But I wonder if there's other things that are like, like very well suited for this scenario. Yeah, and I don't want uh, people think Pluralsight is the only learning or training benefit we have available. Uh, you can also look at LinkedIn Learning, Data Camp, um, Code Magazine. Uh, there's all sorts of different goodies there that have different offerings of what you can actually learn. So you can look at those different ones and see what it is, what the skill is that you're looking to pick up. Um, but they all do have very thorough um, catalogs, I guess, of different learning materials you can look at. Um, one other thing is that, you know, our benefits are always changing. We're always looking to see what's the new thing that we can offer, um, making partnerships with other third parties. So it's all, you know, Mads, as you pointed out, it's not just Microsoft benefits. We have lots of other third party partners in there. And so keep checking back, come to the My Portal frequently and see, you know, has anything changed? Is there anything new in here? Um, we have made a little new um, badge, I guess you could call it, that goes on the tile that lets you know if something is new. And we're looking at how we can uh, let you know of that sooner. Uh, another thing is we do have a monthly newsletter that goes out that lets you know through email what's changed, what's new and exciting, what you should check out. Um, if you're not opted in to receive that, you can go into your profile um, just by clicking your name in the top right hand corner and you can click to opt in to Visual Studio subscriptions uh, marketing newsletters. And it's definitely something you should really check out because there's a lot of really interesting information that comes monthly in that. So how do you subscribe? Is it within Visual Studio, you click your name or is it on the website? Um, it's on the website. I can show real quick here. So let me know when you can see my screen. Yep, we are Perfect. good. So you log into my.visualstudio.com, click on your name in the top corner here, and it will pull up your profile. And from within here, edit profile. And then you can see what you've opted in to receive here. So you can get Azure DevOps newsletters, Visual Studio IDE specific, or Visual Studio subscriptions. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So definitely take advantage of opting into that as well. Yeah. And um, you wrote a blog post. Not I did. That long ago. Yes. And uh, you're basically outlining a bunch of benefits and updates to the Visual Studio subscription uh, system or service. And um, we'll make sure to link to that as well in the YouTube description uh, because there's a lot of valuable information and a lot of the links that we've talked about are in that blog post. So I think it doesn't, if you've seen this episode, uh, we covered every everything that's in that blog post, but, uh, and, and plus more I'd say, um, but it has all the good links. So it's still a very valuable resource, I think. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see more blog posts from you, Katie. Yeah, uh, now that I know I have the blogging power, <laughs> I'm yep. definitely hoping to take advantage of that going forward. And uh, you can even see a picture of my cat looking extremely evil and wanting me to get back into the office. I think she's sick of seeing me here every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be uh, what a cat would do, wouldn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, so we don't have any further questions coming in from the attendees. so. With that, Katie, thank you so much for uh, for joining me here today. Uh, this was very, very enlightening. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for having me. This is really fun. And I hope that, you know, all the listeners are able to realize, you know, all the benefits that come with your subscription and go to the My Portal and take advantage of it and, you know, start learning and using all of those benefits that you may already be paying for and not realize that you get, um, or not paying for because they are included in your subscription. But uh, I think I worded that a little poorly. But utilize those benefits that you get. Absolutely. So my.visualstudio.com um, 
for the live attendees, the blog post is over at devblogs.microsoft.com slash Visual Studio. That's the Visual Studio blog. And so um, it is it is there on the front page somewhere if you scroll down a little bit. <clears throat> um, all right, so that was it. Go to maya.visualstudio.com for your Azure, uh, sorry, for your Visual Studio subscriptions and your Dev Essentials and everything in between. Um, thank you so much for joining us and um, I'll see you next week uh, for another uh, episode of the Visual Studio Remote Office Hours. Thank you. <laughs>